sunshines, rainbows, orchids, and moonlights, and welcome to another reading with me, Ali Jeffka, Mystic Love Tarot. Now, we've got a special uh, tarot special for you today because I have asked my friend and uh, deck creator, Yasmin Westwood, to join us on today's reading. So we're going to be doing a reading on uh, what is your person thinking about you and Yasmin is going to be talking us through the cards that she has designed so it's a really really special episode for you guys today I hope you enjoy it I will time stamp it all for you so you can go through whatever it is that you'd like to go through we will still be using two decks but Yasmin is going to talk us through the cards that pull up for the person that you are thinking of so everyone say hi to Yasmin hi everyone <laughs> so Hi Ali, us? thanks for having you're... me on here. That's okay. And where are you joining us from today? Whereabouts are you today? So I am in sunny Scotland, um, sunny, freezing cold Scotland in Perthshire. I was going to say, how's the weather been today? Because it's been a bit it's rubbish very up cold. in Stoke. It's very is cold it? at the moment, yeah. I don't think I'd survive very well in Scotland. I, I don't like the cold, I like the heat. <laughs> yeah, I like the cold. I love autumn and winter, it's my favourite season, so this is perfect for me. Before we get in today into today's tarot special reading with the beautiful Yasmin Westwood, we want to just excite you all with a beautiful giveaway that Yasmin has just said that she would like to do for you all. Hence why this is put at the start of the video and then we're going to introduce it all again. So you've got a chance to win the Enchanted Soul Tarot. You can see it with that light shining on it. Should be okay. I've got a copy of it here as well. Oh, oh you got a copy of it. The Enchanted Soul Tarot. Yeah, that's better. I've got um, light shining But in that is your, that's your proper copy that she's got in her hand. You know, you guys yeah. have the chance to win it. She's got plastic on it. It's a brand oh, new, brand new copy. Brand new and sparkly. New. And I, I'm sure she will sign it for you as well if you guys want If you want, want to it. sign, I can do that. Just let me know what you want written in it and I'm happy to sign it. So how we're going to do this, and you know how I work with doing competitions on this site, is... We would like you guys to pick a number between one and a hundred, okay? And the nearest number will win. So the nearest number, all you've got to do, think for number between one and a hundred, write it into the comments, make sure that you subscribe to this channel, okay? So make sure you subscribe to Mr. Love Tarot, write a comment of your number between one and a hundred and you, the number that is nearest, I will reveal the answer um in next week's reading so next sunday because this is getting released on sunday next sunday i will reveal the winning number to you all and i'll let you know who is the nearest winner um and then i'll just ask you guys to get in touch with me on instagram or facebook where well, you can you know where i am you can just message me um, and we'll get it sent out to you so you can win a free copy of this um, outside of the uk unfortunately we're not going to be able to provide postage and packaging for your deck but if you are happy to do that yourself and get the postaging and packaging you are still entitled to win this beautiful deck and you will still get it for free and if you still want it signed she will absolutely do that for you quick recap number between one and a hundred write it in the comments subscribe to mr love tarot answer reveal next week free delivery uh, free delivery in uk outside of uk postage and packaging um you'll have to pay for but you will receive the deck signed if you wish perfect good luck good luck Okay, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick, I'm going to show you the card decks and you can pick what deck you'd like to use. Both of these are Yasmin's decks. So this one is the Enchanted Soul Tarot and yep. this one is the Enchanted Dreams Tarot. I'm making sure I got them the right way around because I've got both the boxes in front of me. just didn't want to mix <laughs> up the titles. So first of all, Yasmin, before we get them to pick a deck, I want to ask you why um, the word Enchanted? Enchanted seems you, to be... I knew. I knew you were going to ask me. I'm going to say, yeah, Enchanted seems to be a massive <laughs> theme in your cards. Um, so years ago when I was a little girl and when I could read, my favourite books were The Enchanted Wood by Ina Blyton. I okay? love Ina Blyton. So I've read every single one of her books, but my favourites <laughs> were The Magic Faraway Tree, The Enchanted Wood, The Wishing Chair, okay? And they were all set in Enchanted Lands right mm. so with my decks they kind of transport you to enchanted worlds oh, wow. hence why the name enchanted um my publishers have said i'm not allowed to use that word again now because they get confused with <laughs> you're an enchanted ban <laughs> i've got the len ormond of enchantment as well and that was my last one i was allowed to use that word in so oh you know so three times lucky the word enchanted yeah i wanted to call my next deck the enchanted wood but i wasn't allowed so 
<laughs> oh, what's your next? Is your next decor to do with woodland? It's called the Westwood Tarot instead. Oh, is it all nature based again? It's all animals. This one is oh, just there's no it. humans. It's just animals dressed as characters. Oh, I need to see that. Have you got yeah. some like? Have you got some prototypes for it? Um, no, I haven't. I haven't actually seen the box yet. Um, they're still working on it. The publishers are designing the cover just now, um, so I have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, I obviously get to look at it first though. and approve it before they they um, get the prototypes. And will you be um, able to send us like a little sneaky snippet when I you get a deck? I can't wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Um, but there are loads of pictures on my website of the deck. I've, you know, I've shared some images of that particular deck mm. on on my site. So yeah. Which website? And I'll write it in the description beneath. It's enchantedsoulart.co.uk. Okay, that's the one then. Okay, guys, so deck number one and deck number two. So as always, I want you to think about the person that you're asking about. And I want you to go to the deck that you are most drawn to. So both of these are quite a blue colour, which kind of stands for communication coming straight in from spirit. So they're saying, as you're thinking about your person, can you see or visualise a blue light going to the deck that you are most drawn to? Number one, number two. So how I work um, for you guys that don't know is I work on the collective energy between you all. And those of you that were as bad as mass, as, at mass as me, as bad at maths as I was, let's get the word in right, um, it was a bit like how you worked the average of maths out of, at school, like when you had to add all the numbers and then you came up with the average because you divide it by how many there were. So it kind of works in a spiritual sense of energetic collective energy by going into all your energy and pulling out the mutual energy between you all. So if you need us for personal readings, you can give me a shout. And if you're interested in any of the artwork and decks, you can head over to Yasmin's website. So let's go. Deck number one. So, as I am shuffling the cards, they're rather large cards, so I'm going to have to shuffle in a vertical way rather than a horizontal way. So, as I'm shuffling the cards, we're just going to put the energy of the person you are asking about into it, and we're just going to ask spirit, loved ones, helpers, guides, and goddess. Do, 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 do. what is the person you're asking thinking about you and I am going to get three cards we're just going to start off with three and um, just because Yasmin is going to talk us through the cards so you've got the five of swords I quite like the fact you've got the writing on the bottom if you're not if you're not new if you're new to tarot you've kind of got an indicator of the writing of what the card means right in front of you which is always quite good for newbies with tarot Queen of Wands, one of my favourites, the Queen of yeah, Wands. I like her too. Oh, she is. Queen of Wands and Queen of Swords are my two Queen my of two queens. Well. Yep. Yeah, just love her. And let's just get one more, what they're thinking about you. There we go. Look at that working. The moon. Oh, nice. So quite an interesting reading. And let's just start off by talking about an overall theme that's going on here. So you guys might be feeling a little bit lost at the moment. This connection might be feeling a little bit drawn, a little bit pulled away. And spirit just showed me, you know, when you have that really sticky glue and then you like pull it like that and the situation becomes quite strained. You're going to be feeling like that at this moment in time, like your glue is a little bit gloopy. The thing that's holding you together has become a little bit strained. And you might be feeling that there are underlying issues that perhaps things aren't being said how they should be said. You're going to be feeling that could be a sense of betrayal someone might have hurt you in the past they might have said flippant comments done flippant things or you might have just found out some information from someone with regard to your person that you're asking about so let's start off that was the overall theme coming up <laughs> so let's start off with your five of swords so conflict struggles tensions fights arguments stabbing in the back pain heartbreak and ickiness so your person is going to be thinking a little bit of ickiness over the situation you've probably had things arise between the two of you at the moment which has left you feeling a little bit let down a little bit hurt and a little bit betrayed they could have said something or done something that has really hurt you now when we're looking at this in their thoughts it does look like they are 
the kind of mirroring energy going on between the two of you. So what they are thinking, you are also thinking. And they might be holding a little bit of resentment or arguments towards you that perhaps they've spoke out of turn, they've reacted badly to a specific situation. Um, and there is this kind of sense of pain and suffering that is coming up first and foremost that your person is thinking. So they're struggling a little bit at the moment. So do you want to talk us through the imagery on this card, Jasmine? And what I'll do for you guys that can't see it um, is I will put a picture up of the card right now so that you can focus on it while Yasmin talks about it. So it was pretty much what you just said. I wanted to show the betrayal aspect. You know, it's someone that the, the girl sitting in the back, um, she's crying. She trusted this person who's at the front. And for me, it was about somebody took something of yours that meant a lot to you um, mm. and gloating about it. But what I was trying to show through this card and what not what I was trying to show, I always say the cards create themselves. But I think mm. what the message that was coming across through the creation of that is don't hurt anyone that trusts you because you never know when you could be in that same situation. So for me, that person, the one that's at the front gloating, thinking she's got away with mm. it, might not have got away with it. You know, she might think she has, but that person who's been hurt could have a huge sort of, influence on in something that might come and bite the person at the front that yeah so sense. a bit like a a bit like a karmic energy like what you yeah. do about you get back to me, in return to me, it, that's kind of yeah. what i was getting when that was being created it's yeah you might have one just now but just watch mm. your back because if you do something to someone else you that will come back and get come back and bite you at some point yeah. in the future you know you might think you've got away with it but you might not necessarily have done and yet it's about betrayal it's about being stabbed in the back by someone who you mm. thought meant something to you at one point yeah I quite like her face as well her face is that quite like face right smug, it's isn't like, it? like smirk. Like, smirk. <laughs> yeah yeah it's like, like I got I've, away with it I've yeah, won look this what I've got yeah I've taken just, away yeah Spirit just clearly saying to me then, um, you might have won the battle, but you haven't won the war. And yeah. that's quite an important message, I think, with this kind of cards and what you're saying over there. So even though things have been difficult with your person and perhaps they've handled things in a more negative, negative way with you, they might have won that battle and they might be feeling in control at the moment. But pride comes before a fall, right? But also, but also that how sure are you that you're not that person? Ooh. And then you're not the victim, right? So yeah. it's about which one, which which person in this image are you? Are you the person who's been hurt or are you the person that's causing the hurt? And the, her dress is very yellow. What, is there meaning behind her dress being yellow? To me, yellow? the yellow was all about this sort of proud, the jealousy. Look, you know, I'm the winner here. You know, I've, I, it's about me. You know, I, mm. I, that was kind of what I was getting from that. I, I don't know. So when I'm creating stuff, I don't know half the time why I'm, putting the colors in it's only I after very strongly there had to be a really bright color at the front mm. um to to have her sort of in focus yeah she kind of gives me the ick I gotta say she gives me a little bit of the ick. She's a bit, that's exactly yeah. what I was trying to do but again mm. you know which one are you in the card who are you which which part are you playing and that works out with what we were just saying about the mirroring. So kind of any energy that you guys yeah. are going through at the moment and what you're thinking about and what your person is thinking about, you're echoing that energy onto each other. So you're both probably feeling a little bit betrayed yeah. and a little bit lost at this point in time. It's really interesting. So that leads us on to this beauty, the Yay. Queen <laughs> of Wands. So the Queen of Wands, for those of you that don't know, she is like, one of the best queens not that we're queen um biased but she is one of the best queens she's all about creativities passions joys and sex she is that beautiful magnified energy so when we're asking about your person's thoughts towards you the queen of wands is coming in saying well you know things are a little bit tits up and I've been a bit of an arsehole but actually I'm still thinking about you and I'm thinking about you in perhaps a more of a sexual way and I can see that we have got this creative ability to build more into this relationship but because of what's happened over here I'm just going to ignore this and I'm just going to think about you in a more sexual way because often sex is an easier way um, to talk about things than dealing about emotions so they're probably hiding a little bit from their emotions at this point in time and going down a more sexual route you guys have probably had quite a lot of passions or at least their uh, sexual chemistry between you guys and your person's probably downplaying the relationship at the moment because of this pain that they have caused you um so 
sellers of betrayal and pain over here so they're thinking about you in a way that is perhaps a little bit more light-hearted because if they focus on the emotions they feel that pain so do you want to talk us through this queen of wands yeah so i wanted my queen of wands to be fun and she doesn't care what she looks like or how she comes across because she is so strong in herself you know i am who i am and to hell with Mm. anyone who thinks anything else of me i'm my rising sign is leo so i I love that So I'm a bit of that crazy, wacky, there is a wacky side to me, this fun, crazy, totally outrageous side to me, which a lot of people don't get to see, okay? Um, So I was able to kind of pour that into this card. Um, Mm. You know, if if I was at the Queen of Wands, what would I be? What would my personality be? So there's a lot of that in there, you know, but she doesn't care. She doesn't care how how she comes across. And then if you look in her gown, there is the head of lions in there. So her gown's got little um, wow. Leo black lines yeah, things yeah, in it, yeah, which, say, which yeah. denote, you know, Leo is, is, is a wand sign as well. So I wanted to put that in there as well to show that. that she's a fire sign. I love that. And is it Christmas decorations that she's got around her? I can't remember, but yeah, she's, I mean, she doesn't <laughs> care. You know, who, who says she can't have Christmas decorations? She's well, a queen exactly. of wands, right? Oh, it's, it's either gems or it just looks there's like... There's gems, there's it's... ribbons and there's decorations and there's outrageous makeup and there's like glitter in her lashes and and why not? You know, she she um, she um wants to be seen when she's out and about, right? That's the queen of wands. Mm-hmm. She reminds me a little bit as well of a bit of a festival goer, you know, when you go with all the light patterns all over your face. It's yeah. not that like I've done that for a good few years, but mm. yeah, oh, I love she's her. She's a fun sign. She's a fun queen. Yeah, she is. She's exciting, isn't she? She's got this kind of passionate energy kind of coming forward. Yeah. And that's so, what I want to, to show. So with the guys reading and are they thinking about you, this is saying like they're looking at the lighter side of things that have happened between the two of you rather than focusing on the heavier side, which again is that kind of perhaps escapism from their own actions. Mm-hmm. Ooh. And I just wanted to say on that note, I've seen your queen of one side when we had cocktails in London. <laughs> We went to London yep. in 2000 and, well, it wasn't this year, it was last it? Was year. year. It was last year. Was it last year? Yeah, it was last and year. We were like, we saw the menu and it was like in this dead nice hotel and they had porn star martinis, which was like, yeah, that's the one. And we had them and they were like, it's probably 20, 20 quid, 20 which quid is like, probably like $30 for those of you that are American, I think around that. And um, they were the worst cocktails we ever drunk where they were just like oh, sugary thing. water. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay and on that note that leads us to the last card of the moon now i love a moon card i think because i embody the energy of the moon and those of you that haven't seen my new tattoo i have a new tattoo and i had to get the moon um on me because i work very much with lunar energies as a pagan um, and with the magical side of things so when i get the moon card i automatically get that very strong female intuition coming up so what your person will be thinking about you here is perhaps that you see a bigger picture to things and perhaps you've been that you are you guys watching are all going to be psychics mystics empaths the whole caboodle of you and your person is going to be seeing you in this very very spiritual light and perhaps this is frightening them a little bit because sometimes it is fear of the unknown and the moon really illuminates the shadows you know and I always say on a new moon, um, if you're going to do magic, wait until the new moon is slightly over because it doesn't show the shadow side of things. It doesn't show the dark energies. It just comes in with the light. Um, and this kind of coming up with the reading as well. So your person, when we're asking their thoughts about you, they're seeing you in a very psychic, intuitive light. But they're also a little bit afraid of the shadows that are around them, the shadows that come with you. Because when it comes with someone that is more psychic, there is nowhere for them to hide. And it comes back to that quote of, um, if you want a normal life, don't fall in love with a, with a psychic woman. Don't do it because there is nowhere for you to hide. It is just the raw nature. And sometimes that can really lead us back to that five of swords energy that they are scared of the shadows, that they are scared of their thoughts, they are scared of their feelings, and they act in a negative way because of these fears that come up to the forefront, you know, and then they say flipping comments and then they betray you and then they hurt you because then they're hiding from the shadows that are a natural part of life. So what do you wear with the moon? Let's talk about the moon. So I love the full moon too. Um, I think you can see that most of my cards have a full moon in it. Um, um, The Enchanted Dreams back is a full moon. Um, And that's purely because, you know, I was born on a full moon. So I have this thing with with full moons. And And the full moon baby too. 
Yay! Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with this card, um, obviously the woman being the intuition, you know, I wanted the the female in there. Um, she's holding the moon. She's only illuminating certain bits of the card. There's other bits hidden in shadow. So for mm. me, it was, you know, trying to say to people that, you know, not everything is as it seems. You only see certain bits of things, okay? There, There is more that is still in the shadows that you're not aware of. So you've not mm. got the full picture yet. Um, and that's what I was trying to show with, with that card. Because if you look, I think there's little dragons or something hiding in the shadows. Yeah, there are little dragons. Right? Yeah, But they're not illuminated, right? So there is a dark side. There's that shadow side. You know, mm. we all have demons, which we choose to hide away, right? Um, yeah. And then we don't. We, we choose not to shine a light on it because who wants to deal with our demons? Yeah. Um, so this card is saying, you know, everything's not as light and bright and lovely as you think it is do shine a light on what's hidden as well and I yeah think that's what what was coming across from that card and when so when we're talking about their thoughts towards you as well it's probably that they haven't had this realization of the depth of their thoughts perhaps yeah. as well with regard yeah. to their emotional side of things and we also know the moon influences water because it influences the yep. tides and it influences the body because we have got a high percentage of water in our in our mm. fossil in our physical bodies like i think our yep. lungs or, or our brain is like 90 percent water so the moon really does affect that so when it comes to emotions those emotions that their person might be feeling is kind of really raw, you know, they're raw mm -hmm. feelings and, and, and that can frighten people if they're not ready yeah. to embrace those exactly. lighter sides. Exactly. Yeah. And especially with, um, I don't know if you feel that, but I think with people who are maybe sort of born on a full moon or have a full moon connection, mm. I know for me that when there's a full moon, I'm extremely emotional, you know, yeah. things that I don't want to deal with during the rest of the month, mm. they, they come up for healing or they come up yeah. for me to look at. Uh, every single month so i think again that's why i was trying to show that you know the moon yeah yeah it's beautiful and they're like and it is this kind of releasing and it is that surrendering energy and also you know as females it kind of goes with our cycles as normal yeah. females doesn't it you know I, i've just written an article about um hecate and the high priestess it's coming out in witches magazine i think the spring copy but i've just written about that and i was saying like light and shadow is a massive part of every single human being you know and we have even as women we have the light side which is like the new moon and that's our ovulation and then you have the full moon which is our bleeding and we feel cranky and we feel shitty yeah. you know and it is this kind of cycle energy that could be happening as well with them you know you guys might be thinking these thoughts are really kind of racing around your head and you're going from betrayal to passions to this kind of fear energy and back to betrayal again. So you're probably stuck in a little bit of a cycle or your person. We're talking about your person, but yeah. remember we've got that mirroring energy. And maybe person maybe to keep stuck. a note, if there's certain times when these thoughts are coming up, you know, it mm. could be like you said, are they happening near a full moon time? You know, start taking notes. Cause I started doing that and I was like, wait a mm. minute. This seems to happen every sort of full moon a couple of days before. And you're after a secret a werewolf. <laughs> I know I am right <laughs> <laughs> no but it's true it's true yeah that's a really good idea guys so you can write down your your um your thoughts at these times and you can see if there is a cycle that could be going on you can also sleep with the moon card under your pillow which would be mm. really good to help your intuition don't blame us if your dreams go a little bit crazy <laughs> though as a heads up if anyone's ever slept with a tarot deck underneath their pillow every time I get a new deck I always sleep with it under my pillow and every time I do it I have the weirdest dreams but I have also the weird like the most prophetic visions and the you know prophecies when it happens so that is card deck number one so just a quick recap for those of you that want to know specifically what your person is thinking about you you've got a sense of betrayal you've got a sense of loss and grief and it could go either way because you've got that echoing energy both you and your person feeling the same arguments tension whatever's led to this point a you're both feeling that. You've got point, you've got card B, card B. You've got the Queen of Wands. You haven't got card B at all. You've got point A, then you've got the Queen of Wands who's talking about they're seeing you in a more kind of sexual, fun, light-hearted way because when they bog down their mind over the heaviness that could cause this pain, it's easier to see you in a lighter energy. And then with the moon, they're a little bit scared of, of, of your woo-woo ways and how psychic and mystic and um, intuitive you are. And perhaps you see things that they haven't yet seen for themselves so that is why they run hide and ghost potentially for your lot and that's deck number one so if you need me or yasmin um obviously i do the reading jasmine design the cards so if you need us you can find me you can just find me on instagram you can find yasmin on instagram as well can't you you're on yeah, enchanted on soul art you're definitely online 
yeah um, you definitely yeah yeah so go follow her you can link from mine to hers and you can dm her you can dm me i'm sure she won't mind um so yeah go and check it out deck number one and that leads us on to deck number two So here we go with deck number two. So I was just having a chat with Yasmin about this um, deck. And it's really interesting because when me and Yasmin met in London, we were talking, we both have little boys. Um, uh, Aaron's a little bit older than Hunter, um, but we both kind of suffered a little bit as modern day empresses. We suffered a little bit with a kind of postnatal ick. And then, and you were just telling me about the creation of this deck with your postnatal ick. Yeah, so um, I did not, I mean, I had no plans to create a deck. Um, so I had re really bad postnatal depression after the birth of Aaron. Um, and I didn't know what to do with it because um, I'm not very good at talking to people about stuff. Do you know, I, d I just don't do that. And then this image kept popping up in my head and I was like, OK, I want to create it, but I can't draw. OK, mm. so I taught myself Photoshop. Um, and I used to have like YouTube videos open right on techniques on how to do Photoshop and have one page open with I used to practice the techniques and I created that that card and it was the first card I ever created the three of swords for Ooh. the enchanted dreams right it's just that image and then more images kept popping up in my head and I started creating them and learning techniques on how to create them and I, when I was doing that, I found that I was not thinking about my postnatal depression at all. Mm. It was the only time, you know, where I was just completely focused on doing my artwork and it became a therapy for me. And before yeah. I knew it, like a deck had been created, all 78 cards had been done. You just so, got there with the 78. And I just got there and I was like, <laughs> OK, that's how it's meant to be then. And then the next thing I know, like Shiffer Publishing wanted the deck and then... I've just been creating ever since and I can't they are beautiful them. though aren't they I, and I feel like now now I know the background of that as well like because I I know a lot of well m I would like to say most women's for f have some form of postnatal ick because yeah. it's just it just follows having a kid and, mm -hmm. and and I think we kind of shun it a little bit in society and downplay it and I really don't think that we should be doing that as divine feminine energies I think we should be embracing the fact that this is normal and you can talk to people about it yeah. so if you guys are struggling at the moment um I wish I'd known about that when at the time that I was really struggling because this deck probably would have really helped me that if I'd known it was kind of postnatal based it would yeah. you know give that kind of outlet to help you deal with it you know there's no yeah. men in this deck at all um Yay. I, I know a lot of people <laughs> ask me why was there no men in this deck and it, mm. and for me this just women in this deck there's a lot of feminine energy in this deck because I was trying to find the feminine within me Mm. At that time, you know, you know, like, who am I? What am I? You know, I'm not just a mum, you know. Um, yeah. I've lost who I am. And yeah. this deck was brilliant. It just, there, there was not meant to be men. It never even occurred to me at all that there should be any males in this deck. And there's yeah. not. Um, yeah, well, I love that. Why. I love that. So you guys watching, I know we're never sexually orientated to gender specific on this channel, but the majority of people that yeah. watch are the more divine feminine energy. So you guys, if you have been struggling, not just with like postnatal stuff, like with any kind of mental health battles or physical health battles, because life is effing hard, right? So this is probably a good deck for those harder days for you. Um, so let's see, let's ask about your person because that is the one you want to know about. So your person's energy and let's do what is he, she thinking about you right now. And I'm just going to do the same as I did with deck number one and just get three cards. I just felt like I needed to turn them then because they didn't want to be seen as I was shuffling them because I was they had them that way looking at me and they were like, nope, I don't want that. <laughs> um, those, those of you that know um, how I read, like the decks talk to me all the time. So I was just saying to someone earlier, I was like, my rider weights are knackered. They want to retire. I'm going to have to buy some more. And then I felt guilty for saying it. All of these cards are really interesting. Okay, you ready? We got the world. We like that. These are beautiful, aren't they? Thank you. You've got the five of wands. Ah, oh, I like that one. That's an interesting one. And we finish off with the lovers. So, 
not a bad round totally and so I'll do what I did last time and I'll just do an overview of the cards view and your person's thoughts and then we're going to break down each individual card so your person thinking about you at the moment they are seeing this as quite a successful relationship there is a lot of love here there is a lot of emotions here and there is a lot of joy and prosperity that comes from the connection between the two of you so right overall there is a love but we also have this little bit of conflict that comes with it. So it could be conflict between the two of you. You might have just had some arguments. It could be conflict in their heart, head and their heart because sometimes the heart pulls them in one direction, the head pulls them in another. And um, so you have this kind of overall, you have this little bit of conflict, um, but the overall feeling on your person's thoughts view, they are positive. Your person is into you. They really like you. There are emotions here. They're just a bit conflicted. So let's break it down. The world. Right, the world. World is speaking about success, it's talking about joy, it's talking of a coming together, it's talking of a union. So if you guys are waiting for contact and you want them to reach out to you or you're waiting to see where this relationship is going, this is your clear indicator it is heading in the right direction. There could be somewhere where a cycle has had to be broken for this to happen. Um, but with the cycle breaking, it means that things have been really able to progress forward or are about to pro progress forward between the two of you also could be some form of travel going on with you and your person as well so you might have the same goals dreams and aspirations of wanting to travel of wanting to see the world or just kind of building the connection between the two of you through um you know the ethereal through the internet through the messages through the, all that kind of stuff everything that is internet based coming up with the world so good start Do, would you like to talk us through this one yes so the world card so this was the second card i did for the world the first one um wasn't as happy because <laughs> you know i did my major arcana first right well yeah, i'm yeah. still going through postnatal depression so when mm. it came to the publisher it came this because by that point i felt on top of the world i felt happy i felt beautiful i felt you know all the kind of feelings that you get from this card you know it was mm. like i had started off like on this journey of you know discovering who i was because like I said, I didn't know who I was at the full stage, you know, yeah. I, I don't know who, who I am anymore. And then by the time I got to this this card, you know, the second um, draft of it for the publisher, I had reco recovered my femininity again. You know, yeah. I was a woman. I wasn't just a mom. I wasn't just a wife. I was, you know, I was I was mm -hmm. me again and I felt pretty and, you know, I wanted to do my makeup and look pretty and, you know, be on top of the world. Yeah, it's lovely. It's so, oh, you just made me go all icy. You just gave me the goose pimples. It's a beautiful card. Thank you. And it kind of like the, the, um, symbolism around the world card. It's almost a little bit Roman as well. Do you feel, it's, you know, it's like, meant to be sort of the, you know, like when you win a trophy or something or when, you know, in the, in the old mm. sort of Roman days, like you said, they used to wear the wreaths when yeah. they were being crowned or when, you know, when they accomplished something. And as a divine feminine, we often wear them. I, I don't know about you. That's guys, kind of tons yeah. of circlets that you wear That's, over your yeah. head so it, it was like accomplishing the world type you know thing um going on there with the with the little um wreath thing around the world mm. um and you know the the females looking down going i've done it you know i'm so proud i've done it yeah and it's almost like the the marks on her face are a bit like kind of a bit like tattoos of pride you know like I've, yeah. they were tears but now they've become tattoos like yeah, my pain yeah. i've turned into into, into like beautiful yeah yeah and it's going out into the world so it's flying i can't remember does this one have wings on it or not yeah it's got wings on it does the, on the so world, yeah, yeah um it's been a while since i've looked at that deck but yeah, yeah it's so lovely. it's um so she, you know she's created something and she's proud of it and she's accomplished mm. something hence the wreath and now it's flying out into the world which is like what my deck did it did go out yeah. into the world and after having such a difficult time as well, it is that sense of achievement that comes yeah, with absolutely. it, you know. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm totally back in your corner with that. And, and I'm sure everyone out here that has suffered with any kind of mental mental condition, but specifically talking about postnatal, I think any of us that have been through it when we come out the other side. Yeah. I remember my friend saying to me, because I told her what was going on in my head, and she said to me, you're going to look back in a year or two years time and you are going to see that you were the most rock star mum to go through all that difficult time and still be a good mum and your son is so happy but you just can't see it at the moment and yeah, it, it's, it's tough you don't it's, it's really tough and and we don't like I said we don't give enough credit but that's a story for another day when I write my empress article on the modern day empress <laughs> you know it's gonna be I keep bigging it up and I haven't even started writing <laughs> okay so 
taking us to the five of ones. So you and your person, their thoughts about you, they might be a little bit conflicted at the moment. And sometimes the five of ones comes to me because it's very much about kind of a head and a heart battle. So the ones isn't to do with the emotions, but because it is a passionate card, sometimes the emotions, like we said in deck number one, the emotions kind of get downplayed because it's easier to work on a more sexual energy. So what they do or what your person could be doing is pushing their emotions to the back and acting like a bit of a beep, fill in the blank, because they, they don't really know how to handle their emotions. They know that they love you because we've got the world and the lovers. We know that there is serious emotions here, but they can be a little bit frightened of it sometimes. And it is this kind of, I always see like the five of ones as kids playing with battens. You know, it's a bit of, it's an argument and it's, it, it's, it's, difficult but it's often like trying to get the upper hand on a situation if you're feeling a little bit weak you know you're trying to put that little bit of conflict a little bit of tension so you might have had a few arguments with your person but trust me and trust Yaz they are in love with you there are very very strong feelings here they are just a little bit conflicted over it all um, and it'll be because the emotions are really re real so they're acting on the passionate side of things instead do you want to talk us through that one so again, because this deck is so personal, every card means something to me. Okay. Mm. So the five of wands isn't like me battling with other people. This was my me with my internal voices, you Ooh. know, all these different voices telling you different things. So yeah. for me, the five of wands is that person is standing in the center was me. And then, you know, all the criticism that I was telling myself, mm. nobody else external needed to say anything, you know, um, it was me. One day there'd be something telling me you're a rubbish mom or something, you know, as you know, you, you, the, the things that happen during you, when you're going through the postnatal mm. depression, you, you, you make up all these stories about yourself, don't you, in your head. And yeah. so that's, that's what that is. That's battling my own self, not anybody yeah. external, but it's the battles that go on within you with your own self. So your person could be that their people, the, the ones that they're asking about as well with this card, that this could be um, that they could be battling their emotions with it, probably they because they yeah. see it's a, it's a good thing that you're in a relationship or heading towards a relationship or big, strong emotions. But there's that conflicting energy. And I just got that Taylor, ta Taylor, Taylor, you, everyone knows I'm a big Swifty. Are you a Swifty? Do you like My daughter is. I'm taking her next year to go. You to got Swifty. tickets. We got yeah, tickets got too. Tickets. <laughs> just i was like I'm where, are where are you going where are you going cardiff what about okay, you we're vienna oh you're going mars why <laughs> you're not even anywhere near <laughs> That was the only Cardiff's, place I could get Cardiff's tickets. Cardiff's like, Cardiff's a huge long way, but I was like, I'm going to do some magic because I really want these tickets. <laughs> and then I could see, I was like, there's tons of blocks here. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And I did some magic. And then I was like, the one to get the Taylor Swift tickets. And everyone was like, how did you do it? And he's like, I did magic. magic. That's why I did. I did magic as well. And my daughter didn't, had no idea that I was even doing this or I had registered. So it was a big surprise for her. I love that. But anyway, on that note, <laughs> anyway. the, the anti-hero song, right? Always rooting for, do you, do you know that one? Where she's like talking about like basically she's going to sleep at night and everyone, everything is telling her like she's rooting for the, the heavier side of her rather than the lighter side. Because these battles are very real, aren't they? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So your person might be rooting for the anti-hero within them a little bit as well. <laughs> Just because perhaps they don't feel capable, that they perhaps don't deserve love and they've probably got some childhood issues or traumas or difficulties that or perhaps again physical health issues, mental health issues, or just, you know, just the mind playing tricks, intrusive yeah. thoughts, all that jazz um coming up with that. But rest assured, there are feelings because the last card is the lovers. Um, so the lovers is the positive side of love. I always see kind of the lovers as the light side and the devil is the shadow side of love, right? That's kind of how I weigh it up. So with the lovers here, um, you have got this beautiful energy going on between the two of you. There is love. There are emotions. Um, love always does have a shadow side. It can't be pure all the time. Um, but I want to just focus on the purity between you guys and this connection because with these other cards over here, it looks like your person is really into you, that they have these very strong emotions for you and that they can see this connection has the um, ability to kind of give stable footing, to give stable grounding and to give a solid relationship and foundation if that is what you want. So your person is thinking that there are very, very strong emotions here and that they, they have those feelings. They're just a little bit conflicted about it. So let's look at this one, the lovers. So this is the only card where you see the back of a man. <laughs> There's no other oh, yeah. man, like I said, in the entire deck, right? But you, you see the back of him. You don't see his mm. full form, okay? Um, so for me, this 
she is kind of dreaming of something, but she doesn't know if it's real or not. Mm. Okay. So for me, when I was creating this card, is is this person real or is this person in my imagination? Is this even, you know, is this something that I've been wishing for or dreaming for, but it's not something that what the reality is, if that makes sense? Mm. Yeah, I get it. And he's got a bold head as well. Like he's he's got like tattoos and a bold head. Yeah. So she might be dreaming of like this dream guy and then she's kind of... <laughs> The reality is something completely different. So, yeah, you know, so when we are wishing for someone, just, you know, what are we manifesting and what do we get? Mm. Is it exactly what we were wanting or are we just settling? You know, so that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Even though it's meant to be a positive card, I was trying to be positive in that state of mind. Okay. Well, yeah. You know, I was but trying. I, also, I feel that's true. I feel that's true for many of us, you know, not even talking about their person's thoughts, but, you know, I was I was talking to my best friend earlier about how we in these relationships sometimes like in previous relationships you get to this point that you romanticize about the relationship I think that's and then, the word that's the word yeah. yeah and you look back in hindsight and you're like what the was I doing yeah. for all those that's, years I think that's <laughs> what that is meant to be yeah I think yeah. that's why she's she seems to be in a dream world okay if you mm. see that you, you don't see all of her either so she seems to be in this dream world and there's this person emerging from from the water so emerging yeah. from the subconscious subconsciously there's something totally different mm. you know and is that what you've got or are you, uh, you know, the romanticized part, are you romanticizing what you've got and that's not what the reality is? Um, it's a little bit of a warning there for you guys. I'm going to say that's you, you guys rather than the person because we know your person's really into you with the world card as well. But yeah, beware of sheeps wearing, wolves wearing sheeps. Be careful clothing, what you wish me. for because it might not be what you wished for it, if that makes sense yeah it might not be your dream man he might yeah, just you might be think it is. yeah 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 and there's something uh darker within him I yeah, like or the even fact just, that coming out go yeah on, sorry on. the tattoos and stuff could be signs you know it, it could be like watch out for the signs maybe you're not you're choosing not to see any signs warning signs mm. or anything you know um because you're so busy in this little rose tinted glasses um yeah world um, and mm. the reality is something completely different, but you can't see it. Yeah, emerging out of the water, and I like that because of the water symbol. Like, well, we all know like uh, water is always to do with the emotions, and he's kind of half in it, half out of it as exactly. well, isn't he? Exactly, so exactly. Yeah, yeah, half in it, half out. And um, but we have got the heart on here as well, you know, because there are. She's very pretty, isn't she? Very pretty. Yeah, dreaming dreaming and uh, there's a, a quote about dreaming and love I'm sure there's something about your loving coming to your dreams but I can't hear it they're saying it in my ear and sometimes I can only hear little bits of the whole quote so it's something that I'd normally have to get the laptop out and google but we haven't got time to do that right now so guys that is it we hope that you enjoyed the tarot special um if you need me, you can just drop me a message, mrlovetarot at gmail.com. I've got a website, which is Mr. Love Tarot. Follow me on Instagram. I have got Facebook. Don't use it as much as Insta. I have literally just got into Insta. I finally understood it and what it's all about. <laughs> it took me years and years. Um, and then, Yaz, do you want to say about your how to get in touch with so, you? Should yeah, I'm, I'm on Facebook too, but I hardly ever use my Enchanted Soul Art page on Facebook. Everything's done on Insta for me as well. Enchanted Soul Art um, is my um, tag to get to find me. I share pictures of what's upcoming. I share pictures of what I'm working on. I'm working on mm. a couple of decks at the moment. Um, this new deck coming out next year. So, you know, I'm always creating. So f feel free to follow me. Happy to have more followers. And um, yeah, if you need me for anything else, just drop me a message. Happy to have a chat. Yeah, and she'll tell you if you are interested in what any of the cards, you know, if you have got these decks and you want to know what they mean and, and you're a little, you know, you know the meaning of the cards, but you'd like to know more about the artwork, I'm sure she'd be happy to receive oh, yeah, and telling you all about the it. Cards, all the cards in all my decks, they actually mean something to me. So the, I always add a bit of me in every single mm. card of mine, okay? It might, uh, it's not obvious in the guidebook because I don't share a lot of the stuff that I have put in there, but I know that there's lots of me in, in those cards. And if you're unsure about why did Yasmin put this in the deck, you know, why is this in the image? Mm. Message me. I'm happy to have a chat. It could She'll talk that. you it through it. To me. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, it would mean something to you as well, right? Exactly. And also, you know, if you want to buy the cards, if you're in the UK, you can get them 
through me on my website as well. Um, if you don't want to go through Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because there's loads of fake ducks out there at the moment. It's all the rage, isn't it? All these people yeah, ripping off the, exactly. the artists. It's terrible. But that's a story for another day. Right, my Mystic Tribe, I love you all lots. I will speak to you next week. Drop me a message if you need me. Stay blessed and lots of love from my house to yours. And thank you very much, everyone, for tuning Thanks in. for coming on. Thanks no, for joining it us. Fun. It's been it's absolutely been wonderful. Yeah, yeah, it has. Yeah, we we'll just get like bad cocktails next time, right? Yeah, yeah. No, we've got to get. We've got to find a proper cocktail bar <laughs> know, next time. I know, right? We will. That's our. That's our mission. I might. I might go to the conference in Manchester this year rather than in London. I was thinking because Manx really just to let you guys all know if you're interested, might go to the conference in Manchester because Manchester's not too far from me. As London's a bit of a. It's a bit of a mission, so I was thinking of going up there. But we'll see. We'll see where the year takes us. Um, Taylor Swift first. And I'm definitely going to Glastonbury for the week as well, so that will be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, lots of love. We'll speak to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Right.